All right, we are back. It's the YouTube classroom. Autodesk 3ds Max 2018 video 27. This is quarter one, week six, day three. Today we are going to do multi-edge surfaces in the UV modifier. We are going to start out with our box, our simple, humble box. And we are going to right click and convert to an editable poly. Um, you gotta take my word for it. This is currently um, 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Uh, you just trust me on that one and we're going to select all of it and what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little more complicated we are going to go ahead and inset these edges um, by polygon what that does is it allows us to inset every single edge rather than all of them as one so every single face is going to be its own thing so I'm going to move this in by let's say 12 centimeters that looks about right sure all right, cool. So this is a 12 centimeter bevel, or inset. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this negatively. So I'm going to hit right click and I'm going to negatively extrude this in by, let's say, negative four. Cool. And then I'm going to click the OK and then we are done. I'm going to grab M for another material. Um, let's see what I got here. Sample slot. Uh, cool. Double click. I'm going to get my, uh, no, I'm going to leave it gray for now just because I'm trying to give you guys a look at what, you know, a better idea. So this is what we have, our simple box. What we want to do is we want to make sure that when we extrapolate this out, just like we did last time, we want to talk about how we can planar map and sort of map these um, to the, a 2D plane. That's what we need to do. We need to find a way to break this shape up so that every single face is flattened out as best as it can so that um, we can make sure that when we put a material on it, it doesn't get stretched. So if we have a material, I'm going to hit M for material, and I'm going to drag in my 256 crate, just as an example. I'm going to drop it in this diffuse color. Uh, it starts out pretty bad, actually. I'm surprised, mostly because we edited this some. So it's like all stretchy and yucky and weird. That's because it doesn't know where to put the image because we created new geometry. Now, we could just hit, uh, could throw our UV modifier on there, modifier list, type UN and hit enter. Maybe. If I had it selected, it'd be better. UN, okay, cool. Um, so the whole thing should be selected if I didn't do that before. Um, and also, I don't ever use ignore back facing. I think it's terrible, so I'm going to do it all again. I'm going to go back to editable poly, hit yes, make sure nothing's selected, uh, and then make sure this is set. So I'm going to grab all of these faces. I'm going to box map them, and it turns out that looks okay at first. You can see we've got some weirdness here where the wood framing actually comes over a little bit. Um, but all in all, that's not terrible. However, if we were doing something a little more complicated, let's say like, um, let's do a, where, let's do a cone. All right, I'm gonna drag a cone up, boop. All right, material, and slap my cone on there. If I wanted to have more control over that cone and how it's gonna look, I need to have a better way to put that material on there. Right, So what we need to do is figure out a better way to sort of see how this is going to look. I'll turn off edge faces just so we can get a better idea of what's going on. See, it looks all right, um, except up at the top. So what we need to do is find out a good way to add a material so we can have a lot of control over it, because currently we don't. Um, when I open this up in the UV editor, I'm going to delete that cone because it's junk anyway. All right, cool. So uh, UV editor, there we are. You see that the box itself has sort of been mapped okay, but what if I really wanted a lot of control over it? Or what if I had a, a, a part of the box that was really important? We talked about this a little bit when we did the box last time, but last time we didn't actually have multiple edges to work, work on. We only had the, the main six edges. Now we've got these inner box edges, like these all the way around here. When, oops, not that one. These. We need to make sure these get 
that get some uh, loving as well. We've got to make sure that they are covered and not stretched and not distorted. And the way this is currently built um, will be difficult to figure out exactly what part would be where. So the best thing we can do is sort of decide how we can calculate what we want things to look like. So for instance, if I know if I select this and then I expand it out, I will get these edges, okay? If I take this and planar map it along, let's see, Z, then I can double click this plane, move over, and then tools, relax, by polygon, start, stop. You'll notice that I've get, I'm getting weird stretching on the sides. See how it's stretched? That's not what we want. It looks weird. The reason we're getting stretching is because this image, this piece here should be a rectangle, but it's not. It's like a trapezoid. So what we need to do is we need to split that edge here, that one, by breaking it. If we break it there, and we double select, or we click on that and break it there, and then we can grab this piece again and then relax it. Tools, relax, start relax, apply. Now see how now this is a rectangle? See how this looks good now? Or at least it looks straight, right? So now if we take this, and I'm going to get this out of the way just for now. Put this over here. So let's say I was trying to make sure this lined up well. So I'm going to grab the whole thing and I'm going to sort of set it there. And then I'm going to move the other part to where it would make sense. Maybe like that. So now this looks pretty good, right? Uh, this looks all stretchy. At least it starts to look stretchy. And then over here it's all weird and you can see the edge line sort of going in. So what happened is we broke this and it made this, this particular uh, rectangle perfect. So we need to break the other edges too. So let's go back to edges, grab these corner ones, that one, break, and this one, and break. Oops. All right. So now grab all the faces and relax it again. Start relax, stop relax. Cool. So if you look at it now, we've got a little bit of weirdness here, right? Because Maybe our image isn't perfectly aligned. We could align it a little better, right? Let's see if we can do that. Grab all of it, move it down there, and move this one there, and move this one there. So what I've done is now I've made sure that the image is, each specific face has been laid out flat. So now there is no distortion. We've got an edge that runs along the inside. Obviously, this outside part is still a mess. Um, but wrong button. But um, but that part looks okay. And that is the key to what we are going to do. We are going to look at a way to make sure each one of these is flat. Now, I use this sort of box to start with, but realistically, in order to check, we need a checker pattern because a checker pattern shows us where distortion is. Okay. Um, if I have a checker pattern. And a good way to make one is to go into the material editor by hitting M, right click, materials, a general, uh, let's do scan line, standard. And now I'm going to right click, go to maps, general, checker. It's up at the top. And now I'm going to attach checker to diffuse color and double click checker. And I'm going to change the tiling um, to 10.1. And I'll show you why 10.1 here in a second. It relates directly to how the checker is laid out. So now I can take that and I'm going to show it in viewport and I'm going to add it to the material. Cool. So now what we should have is nice checkers everywhere. On the top, we know it's nice checkers because we already set it. On the sides, though, um, it looks okay. It actually looks really good. This is weird, maybe. Um, but usually, you don't have something that looks so good. Usually, you have something that looks more like this. Um, let's, do, let's do planar map. Sure. All right, cool. So this is much more close to what you usually get. A bunch of weird streakiness in their checkers. Now, some of it looks OK. Like anything that's perpendicular to x looks fine. 
but anything that's perpendicular to y or or um, uh, per well, I, sh I said perpendicular. I meant aligned with z. If it's aligned with um, this is y, I think. If it's aligned with front, if it's aligned with y or x, it looks stripy, and that's not the color that we want or the 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 image that we want. We want checkers, which looks fine from the top. So what's happening is, is that material is being cast through the object only from one direction. So we need to make sure that it's from every direction and laid out appropriately. Okay, so right now the projection is coming only from the top. So we're getting checker maps from the top. But from the side, it's still coming from the top. So that image is getting streaked down this way. Okay, see how that works? That's like the process of UV unwrapping. How the material gets sprayed onto the object from a specific direction. The thing is, we need to be able to set this off in a bunch of different ways. Okay? And to get that, we need to think about how we're going to lay these faces out so that they can all be flat. If you think about it, if I take this and snip it like a bearskin rug. If that and this are planar map from Z, wait, am I looking at it right? Yeah, they're planar map from Z. And we go to UV editor. That's from the top. If I go to tools, relax, this middle, this inside section will flop out. It'll like f unfold out and it'll turn into this shape here. By doing that, Start, relax, stop, done. By doing that, we now have, oh, that's being weird. There. Um, by doing that, we have control over the actual image. And this is now perfectly rectangular like it should be. If I did all of these together by growing all of that section and then planar mapping it from Z and then going to tools relax after I double click that tools relax start relax it's not perfect it's a little bit distorted mostly here see how those angles go in that doesn't look good it looks fine from the top but once again on the edges it gets weird now you're never going to be able to make things perfect however if you slice things appropriately, you can lay them out so they're as close to perfect as you can get it. And at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for something that's a little bit um, as perfect as you can get it. With some, There's always going to be some distortion, but with as little distortion as possible while still making it look obvious or look, look uh, well, look, look good. And that's the trade-off you're going to be working on. UVing, the concept of UVing is really, really complicated because you're taking a 3D object and you're slicing it in places so you can lay it as flat as you can get it. The box is easy, um, but things like spheres are next to impossible. To get this to lay flat is impossible. Um, no matter where, how we slice it, it's going to end up being problematic. Um, you've seen this with the globe for the last, you know, thousands and thousands of years humanity has been trying to make a map out of the globe and it's extremely difficult because there's no good way to get this to be even checkers all the way through unless you distort it or slice it up somehow um, so we've got this sphere if we go into a UV map on it unwrap you can even try a spherical map um, at best alignment All you can get is this, and in that case, the squares become rectangles in the center, so everything looks way bigger and stretched in the center, and then it's too skinny at the top, and it just looks bad. The only place it looks okay-ish is around, you know, this area, but even still, that part's squished if you're going to fit it into a square. If you try and stretch it out, you can sort of get it square, but only along specific sections mostly right there at the bottom it's still super squished and distorted so there's no way you're going to fix all of these problems forever how however you're going to have to try to get as even distribution as you can the way we would do that with a globe is basically bake it into the texture so make the texture at the top a lot wider 
and then make the texture where in the center a lot better, a lot you know more controlled, um, and try and just get that as close as we can. Now in the next video, we're going to uh, sort of fix some of this and talk about how we could lay this out so we can use some parts over. So a lot of times you'll use the same material in multiple spots on the same model. And you do that by sl slicing up the UVs and laying them on top of each other in places that you can. Now this only works for certain types of modeling um, and it doesn't work well with normal maps unless you've really sort of planned it out. However, it's going to be a good way for us to save a lot of um, memory by overlapping the same coloring or material onto this, uh, uh, the same or different sections of a model. So with that, we will see you next time. I know this time we didn't actually do a whole lot when it comes to like actual like turning things in, but in the next video, um, I think we'll go ahead and actually build this out and finish where we are. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video when we take and actually lay this out in a UV. See you next time.